Ah, Christmas. Christmas is a time for celebrations. Unfortunately, I've already eaten a lot, so we're just going to have to do with this video. Sorry. Oh, hello, me dumplings. I'm not really ready for Christmas, are we? Oh, so am I. And you know what gets me into the Christmas spirit? Watching some Christmas specials. Now, let's see. Ooh, Shrek the Halls. That has Puss in Boots in it. Mm. Uh, I mean, Shrek and his family. And Puss in Boots. Yeah. So you go again. Let's uh, sc scream that to my Chromecast and uh, let's watch it together, shall we? Oh, well, that's fucking great. The Chromecast isn't bloody working again. Ugh. Um. Hmm. Shit, what do I do now? I'm serious, I don't own any bloody Christmas DVDs or Blu-rays. I don't. I seriously don't. Most of them are shit anyway. Yes, I hate most Christmas specials. They're fucking awful, most of them. Ugh. Surely there must be something, you know, Christmassy that I also enjoy that has a physical copy that maintains within this household. There must be something. Hmm? Oh. What do we have here? Ooh! Basil Brush's Christmas Crackers! Oh dear, this clearly belonged to my brother. Hmm. Eh. Well, the disc seems fine at least. Alright then, how about I review one of the episodes from this six episode disc. Heck, we could even make it a tradition. I review one of these every Christmas. As long as there's only six more Christmases. Hmm, I'll blow up the world after that. Let's see, let's see, there's, there's so many options. Oh, Santa Brush, oh yes, yes, yes. The, the original Basil Brush show Christmas special. Not the original Basil Brush Christmas special, you know, that's... That's got to go back in the, you know, 60s through the 80s, but, you know, the Basil Brush show, I grew up on this. I remember watching these as a kid. Yes, Santa Brush. No, that's too predictable. Let's, let's review a series five episode, yes. Where Mr. Stephen is gone. And in his place, his cousin. Or nephew. Or something. I can't remember which. Liam has now take the helms. Yes. And there's no business like snow business. I'm not joking, that's the actual fucking title. Oh well. Let's put this DVD in and watch. I've got to get up now. Come on then. <sighs> so we start off with this episode owed as any other Basil Brush show episode would start from series five through six. And we get a little animated gag. What did the snowman's wife say to the snowman when he whispered romantic words into her ear? Eh? Don't start getting slashy on me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. To be honest, I prefer the old gags where Basil would just directly address the audience. You know, Basil the puppet, not the animated character. 
But hey, uh, it was clear by this point they were starting to run out of jokes as these ones aren't even on the basil brush quality of. But hey, at least we get a really cracking opening which was used for series 5 and 6 and you know what, I actually prefer it to the original. <laughs> It has a lot more energy to it, and it just feels a lot crazier. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind if they still did like little shorts like this. It was pretty good. Stop pumping my leg. So this episode Max starts off properly, as appropriately, on Christmas Eve. Well, at least I'm assuming it's Christmas Eve. It's never really explained. All I know is Christmas Day is at least a deal we It's either December 23rd or 24th. It's one of those days. Like, just before Christmas. Am I pointlessly analysing this for no reason? Possibly, but it doesn't matter. What does matter uh, is, hey, everything seems to be going smoothly in the brush household as our narrator says. Where we see he, Basil and Miss Medicine Test out the mistletoe from last Christmas. So look, last year's mistletoe. Oh, hold it up, medicine. Let's see if it's still working. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe we should double check it to be on the safe side. <laughs> I think you can like totally kiss that idea goodbye. <laughs> we get a nice little gag of. Yeah. Might we test it out again, Miss Megerson? No. It's a, it's a decent little, little gag. To be honest, I wouldn't mind another kiss from Basil. Because he's a fucking puppet. Although in real life, it, within the show, obviously, he's meant to be an actual fox. To be honest, I wouldn't want to be kissed by an actual fox once, even if Basil was real. So a little chilling out there, yes, Basil is not real. Actually, why am I addressing children? Do you even know who Basil Brush is? I know there was that sort of relaunch-ish thing back in, you know, 2015 and 2016. Has the BBC even aired this in 10 years? I don't think so, somehow. But regardless, you know, things seem to be all as normal. Let's get to the plot. Also another thing I just dislike about out the series 5 and 6 is that for quite a few episodes, Basil, rather than wearing his, you know, traditional uh, suit, you know, the green, green suit which he started wearing at the start of the Basil Brush show, which is ba basically just a green version of that of his original attire from 60s so to the 80s in the original Basil Brush. Here, uh, they, they decided that, you know, Basil should be more cool and hit with the kids and gave him a hoodie with two B's on it. This just feels like something trying to be desperately hard enough, and unfortunately, Basil wears this for the vast majority of the episode. I know it's a nitpicky thing, but. You know, come on, I'd rather have cool, suave, sophisticated looking Basil Brush to trying to be hit with the kids Basil Brush. It's sort of, and especially the look of it, 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 it really does date it. But anyway, let's continue again before I interrupt myself again. I'm very good at doing that. So, Ms. Medicine and uh, Basil. Pretty much uh, settle a bet here. Ms. Medicine reckons, yes, and I'm going to be calling on that for her because it's much funnier and more entertaining, at least on my part. But anyway, Basil reckons that it's going to snow on Christmas Day because he can feel it in his brush. If uh, you don't know what his brush is, his brush is his tail. And uh, to be honest, he has every right to think that, to be honest, because brush. Brush. 
has been uh, right on a few occasions before in the series. So, to be honest, yeah, he kind of has every right to believe it's going to snow on Christmas Day. However, Ms. Medicine uh, does not believe it because her nose does not believe it. Her nose is telling her that it's going to snow on Boxing Day. Obviously, we both know in England it's not going to snow on Boxing Day or Christmas Day. Well, throughout December normally. I mean, come on, it's December right now. It's barely a bit nippy out there. There's not even frost at the minute. And now I live in the fucking northeast. I bet anyone who's down in the south right now in London or somewhere, I bet it's pro probably about 10 degrees warmer down there than it is here. I should know because every time I do go down to London, it is like going on a holiday to another country. It's so much warmer. It's despiseful. But in terms of a Bex, eh, so all right. To be honest, it's it's more of the antics that ensue. And to be honest, with Basil, it makes sense because uh, this you know ability that he senses in his brush has been referenced before. But with this stuff with his medicine, is it's never been referenced before or since. Though there is a bit of a gag that does reveal it, and I will get to that later. But anyway, one by one, the girls that all decide to side with Madison, and all the boys decide to side with Basil. Basically, the prize is, whoever wins, or whichever group of people wins, they get their Christmas presents, plus the other group's Christmas presents. So, if the boys win, they get their Christmas presents, plus the girls. If the girls win, they get their Christmas presents, plus the boys. Yeah, why not? It's some, something worth risking for. I wouldn't. <laughs> but then again, I know what I'm getting for Christmas. I should go and put some money towards it. And I normally buy them all anyway myself. Continue. Oh, well, we're about five minutes into the episode now. Now with all the plot details and that set up. Time to have some guest songs, since it's a Christmas special. Have a cracking Christmas if you're lucky. Bang, bang! Bing, bing! <laughs> and to be honest, I'm all for them. Well, one of them. First, we have Cousin Mortimer. For those who don't know who Cousin Mortimer is... How dare you. Cousin Mortimer is Basil's cousin. Cousin? Cousin! And is basically a bandit. Think of the most stereotypical uh, robber that you can think of. That is Cousin Mortimer. We also have uh, Basil's nephew, Bingo. And Cousin Mortimer and Bingo both have their own catchphrases. Cousin Mortimer's is... <laughs> bang, bang! Settle. And uh, Bingo's is just Bing Bing. Yes, I thought that was a pretty good one of oh, Bingo. Uh, Bingo, to be honest, can sort of be a bit on the fence. Sometimes you love him, and sometimes he can be a little bit irritating. Just a little bit, not ridiculously. Though, to be honest, he's all right. Although, to be honest, he barely makes a point in this episode. He's He's in it for being in it. It's just another character that they can just shove in there, to be honest, just so they can have another guest star. Although Cousin Mortimer and Bingo are both voiced by the same actor. <laughs> Get the kettle on, love. It's brass foxes out there. I wouldn't bet against snow. Double Christmas presents. <laughs> bing, bing. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Both of them have in really different voices, but hey. It works! Hooray! Oh. Okay, so Bingo and oh, obviously Cousin Mortimer get in on the basically, we want double our presents. Although, to be honest, Cousin Mortimer, he's got nothing to lose in this because, to be honest, 
He's not going to be on Santa's uh, nice list, so to be honest, he's got nothing to lose. He's probably not going to get a present regardless. So, <laughs> why not try for, for one anyway? We then, look, obviously, it's Cousin Mortimer. And he comes up with the idea to... You know, there is one way to make sure we win the bet. Really? What's that? Cheat! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fair enough to me. Cheat! And soon all the boys decide, yeah, let's cheat because uh, the odds are pretty much stacked against him. It is baking out there! It is baking out there, Dave! That was an awful impression of Paul Chowdhury. You're welcome. But uh, they can say cheat. Basil phones up his uh, on again, off again, sometimes maybe not girlfriend, Foxy Roxy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, Roxy, are you still coming to ask for Christmas? Oh, I certainly am, Basil. I'm just putting on a little bit of makeup before I board the plane. Well, see you in three months' time then. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> oh, you cute, wise, cracking old fox, you! <laughs> <laughs> Roxy, Roxy, where were we? Ah, well, is there anything special I could bring you, Basil? Well, Roxy, mm -hmm. there is just one thing that'll make everyone's Christmas complete. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who was uh, introduced early in the series? So, yay, another puppet to add to them. Although, to be fair, Foxy Roxy does have a point to the plot. Two points. They're very short and very plot convenient. But it's something, I guess. So Basil calls up Foxy Roxy and says, Oh, the only thing that everyone wants for Christmas is snow from Antarctica. So what does Foxy Roxy do? Well, since she's uh, rich and famous, she gets some snow from Antarctica flat, flown all the way to the Brush household and plonked in the garden. Unfortunately, this blocks up the doors and unfortunately everyone begins to freeze. However, this plot point does not make sense for one crucial reason. You see, the whole point is that, you know, everyone's snowed in and they're trapped. Except they're not. Because the snow, although it's blocking, you know, the back gut, Arden doors, it's not bro blocking the front door. Can you see the issue here? They're all going out, out of their mind because they're going freezing cold and they're running out of food and that. Because they are trapped in here. The front door? Come on, the front door! Just try the front door! Like, come on! This is an apartment. Just try the door. No? Are we not even going to acknowledge its existence? No? Well, if the episode can't be asked to, you know, to do it, then neither can I, I guess. Yay. We have more antics to ensue as we have a little bit of a pattern. Parody of Mission Impossible. Right, let's nab those nibbles! <laughs> oh, look at those, come on. Can we help you, boys? Yeah, you couldn't give us a quick leg up, could you? <laughs> With Cousin Mortimer and Bingo trying to steal the girls' confectionery. AKA biscuits and cakes and stuff like that. Unfortunately, the greedy buggers have eaten them all. Except I'm not eating them all because I can clearly see cakes and that on the table. Oh dear, dear, dear. Yeah, saying that there's long life, but there's clearly some right in front of them. Oh, come on. But hey, eventually both of them sort of apologise and that to each other. And they just want to have a happy Christmas. And the solution finally ensues. Foxy Roxy has the world's biggest fucking hairdryer. 
which, thanks to Liam's extension cord, they're now going to melt the snow with, which they successfully do. Hooray, they are no longer trapped, even though they were never actually trapped. In fact, seconds later, seconds later, a postman comes through the door, revealing that Ms. Madison had also been cheating by having a snowmaker delivered. On Christmas. On Christmas Day, delivered. And also it proves the fucking door. You could have escaped at any point through the fucking door. Yeah, well. To be honest, throughout the episode, I do enjoy the Anil gags. Because Anil... Anil's Anil, he's hilarious throughout it. In this one, though, they don't really have him doing much. In fact, they have one joke for him. He wears cr different costumes of stuff relating to Christmas. And then he says... It's what Christmas is all about, innit? And to be honest, that's all he's got to do. Again, it feels like another... This is a character throughout the series. We will place him in this episode. So we can have all the characters throughout the series in this one episode, in this Christmas special, to show all of the different characters. It's also at this point revealed that Ms. Medicine's nose um, is not special at all. And the fact it's revealed she's just got a cold. Which, to be honest, I actually, I quite like that payoff, actually. It proves that Miss Madison had nothing special about her nose. At all. Which is why it's never referenced before or again after. So it was just a one-off thing for this episode. Yay. But regardless, they all wake up the next morning to get the shittest Christmas gifts I've ever seen. Wow, stuff including fucking extension cords. Come on, Weird Al made that joke. Weird Al made that joke. But you're literally doing it here. And then we end on a nice little happy Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yay. That's magic. Yes, Lucy. Christmas magic. Merry Christmas, everybody! So, overall, what do I think of this Christmas special? Yeah, it's alright. It's decent enough. To be honest, this thing could have gone a lot worse. I mean, considering that this is just the second of the six Basil Brush Christmas specials, at least this one is an actual Christmas special. Believe me, later on, the Christmas theme got looser and looser related. And the plot of them basically being stuck in the flat, even though they're not fucking stuck in the flat, is a nice little idea and a nice little bonding. The problem is there's far too many characters in this episode. Really, there are just too many. And each of them barely gets any screen time at all. Bingo, I forgot was in this episode. Owed until rewatching it. Fo Oxy or Oxy only has two points. Hello, I am the plot. I am the solution. There we go. She is the cause of the issue, but also that she gives the solution of the issue as well. That's her whole point of the episode. To basically cause an effect. Eh. She does get a bit more dialogue. Molly, as ever, is just shoved to the sideline. Oh, yeah, did I mention Molly? Did I mention her? She's in this episode. Yeah, I know. I think this, this is the problem that happened between season series five and six of the Basil Brush show. There was just too many characters in it at once. It needed a much tighter and stronger focus. And it just feels a bit higgledy piggledy. It's not bad. It's an enjoyable enough time. And when I was a kid, I absolutely loved it. And you know what? Today, it still has one thing that a lot of Monday Christmas specials do not have. And what is that? Charm. This does have a 
nice British charm that, you know, you just don't really get these, these days. A lot of the jokes are recycled like the, oh, we don't have the telly or we don't have the internet joke. It just feel a bit of recycling and to be honest it does feel a lot of yeah we're just plunging on and 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 on. It doesn't have stakes welcome and to be honest it's an enjoyable enough time. The plot isn't very original and that I mean to be honest most of the stuff on the show wasn't. But it's still an enjoyable enough time and to be honest there are lots of worse things you could be watching this Christmas. Oh, believe me, I've seen them. Besides, it's only 25 minutes long, if that. But yeah, you could do a lot worse. But anyway, I've been sitting here smelling my dog's farts for the past 45-ish minutes, or however long I've been recording this, I'm not sure. But anyway... If this is the last video, which I don't know if it is, that I do before Christmas or even this year, I hope you and wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you excuse me, I'm going to pass out. You know, despite now even being 20 years old, I still cannot sleep on Christmas Eve. I know, I know exactly what I'm getting. I should. I was the one who bloody ordered it off eBay. But still, I just cannot sleep until I've opened my presents at midnight, or at least my stocking. <laughs> <sighs> but then there's all that time to wait. I mean... All that time on Christmas Eve, in my bed, alone, in my bed, all alone, you know, waiting for those presents and that, alone, in my bed, at night, alone, waiting for hours, alone, in my bed, at night, alone. What could I possibly be doing, you know, at night on Christmas Eve, in my bed, alone? What could I possibly be doing? Let's make it snow! <laughs> Merry Christmas.